secondary battery. The secondary battery, the first example is nickel cadmium battery. So if you remember the diagram first, thoroughly, if you are thorough with the diagram, you can write it point wise. It is very simple for you to understand the concept provided you understand the diagram. So concentrate on the diagram and if you have any doubt, rewind this video. Right? So now we have the nickel cadmium. Clear? Which is near anode, which is cathode. Our first question comes. But here you should be remembering that nickel cadmium battery is an example of secondary battery. So what is a secondary battery? Secondary battery, if once it is discharged, you have put that in some transistor radio or some wall clock, clock and everything and the camera flashlights we use it. So if once it is discharged, generally we keep in it, we take them under recharge. So by keeping in the plug in the switchboard, by using 230 volt uh, current and adapter, we will be recharging batteries or cells. So, if once these are re recharged, again we can use them, right? They are recyclable, reusable, reusable again and again we can reuse them, right? That is the main importance of secondary battery because the cell reactions are reversible. So, their cell reactions are reversible reactions. So, forward reaction is possible. And if you supply the energy, the backward reaction is also possible. That is the main important thing you should remember while discussing the secondary batteries. So for secondary battery, the best example is nickel cadmium cell. So while discharging, if uh, for example nickel acts as cathode, nickel acts as cathode and cadmium acts as anode, while discharging, while discharging, for example, if nickel acts as cathode and cadmium acts as anode, while recharging it, means once it is completed, we keep it for recharging, charging it. While charging it, what happens? Anode becomes cathode, cathode becomes anode. That's all. That is the thing you should be remembering the other point, right? So now we shall see the construction and working of. Uh, nickel cadmium battery. So the same similar thing you should remember. So this one is the cadmium rod. So cadmium anode and here we have inside it we have the nickel oxide hydroxide NiOOH. Simply we write nickel battery, nickel cadmium cell but here what is there inside NiOOH is there and these two are separated using a separator. So this is the separator here. So positive thermal, negative thermal cathode, right? Anode. So now we shall see, this is how the nickel cadmium battery will be. It is not like a zinc in a container, it is completely tightly packed in polypropylene. So plastic, in plastic it will be there. So this is the nickel cadmium battery, you can see here very clearly, nickel cadmium battery. So I told you, right, this is a rechargeable battery. Nickel cadmium battery is a rechargeable battery. So it contains cadmium rod metallic cadmium as negative electrode means anode so cadmium is anode automatically cathode will be nickel but you should not write nickel i said it is nickel oxide hydroxide here we write nickel oxide hydroxide n i o o h we write like this this is our cathode. Cathode is NiOOH. So it should be very very clear. Whenever you say nickel, it implies that if we are not using nickel metal, but we are using its compound NiOOH, nickel oxide hydroxide. And what is the electrolyte? So electrolyte here used is generally potassium hydroxide as general base. So electrolyte is KOH. KOH acts as the electrolyte. Electrolyte. So three points we have known till now. What is cathode? What is anode? And what is electrolyte? So our anode is cadmium. The cathode is nickel oxide hydroxide, and electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. So inside this we will have everything. 
Next step. What are the cell reactions? Every time you have to write this thing. Three point. First one is what is carried, what is anode, and what is the electrolyte. Fourth one is the cell reactions. At anode, and at cathode, and what is the overall? So while discharging, I'm saying very clearly, while discharging means if you are using this battery in a camera. I put this battery in the camera and I'm using it for flashlight. Then it becomes the anode. So this is I said this is cadmium. So cadmium becomes the cadmium anode. So this is the cadmium and this is our anode now. So this is our anode. So this cadmium reacts with the potassium hydroxide I told right electrolyte OH minus to form CdOH twice. This is while discharge. At cathode, what happens here? This is our negative terminal. You can see clearly here plus stays positive, minus is negative, negative terminal here, right? So nickel oxide hydroxide reacts with water and absorbing the two electrons, it forms nickel hydroxide NiOH twice. And again, we have generated our two OH minus. So two OH minus we consumed, two OH minus we have regenerated. So, okay, potassium hydroxide is our electrolyte. So, KOH concentration does not alter because OH minus is consumed at anode and it is regenerated at cathode, right? During the discharge reaction. What is the overall discharge reaction? So, add these two reactions CD plus 2NiOH, 2OH minus 2OH minus cancel, 2H2O, 2 electrons, 2 electrons cancel, cadmium hydroxide. And nickel hydroxide plus energy. What is this energy? Current. You are getting some voltage. Current. So, this is a during the discharge. While recharging, what happens? I said this forward reaction becomes the backward reaction. This is what I have clearly written here. During recharge, the reactions go from right to left. So, this is discharging, so during recharging, I will use a different color here for you for to understand. So this is, will be reversed during recharge. This reaction will be reversed, so recharge. This reaction will be during recharge. If forward reaction is during discharging, recharging will be the reverse reaction. So what are the reverse reactions taking place here? You see here, you can see here, overall cell reaction during recharging will be cadmium hydroxide plus nickel hydroxide plus energy. This energy, where are you getting this energy? This energy you are providing by putting it in a plug and switching on it. So this is also current, electric energy. Electric energy you are supplying externally. You get cadmium, nickel oxide, hydroxide, and H2O. So, this is exactly the reaction which is reverse of this. So, see here cadmium NiOOH to H2O. These are should be regenerated. So, look here, these are the products. So, the reactants converted into products and products converted into reactants. So, this is during recharging and this is during discharging. This is discharge reaction. So, it should be very very clear and it should be very very thorough. Instead of writing twice, you can simply write it as this forward is discharge, backward is recharge. Right? So, this is about the uh, nickel cadmium battery. So, from the above cell reactions, it is very clear that cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide are deposited at anode and cathode. Right? That is clear. So, this is reversed by Recharging. Recharging means applying current. So you have to put it in charging, right? Applying a current. So use current, you will get it. Recharge it very clearly. You will recharge it. And you will get the reaction here. This is the reaction. This energy is what? Recharging energy. This is. So this is a very important point you should remember and now you can see here the same uh, diagram what I explained previously the same I put here. Now see here the what are the uses of this. What are the important uses? The important uses is it is rechargeable very good. Now they are used in portable electronics. 
water portable electronic can only be used in toys. So for children, if you buy a toy within half an hour or two hours, if it discharges, what happens? They start crying. So if you can recharge it again and keep it there, then it will be useful for you. It is also used in photographic equipment and flash flashlights. Third one is transistor radios and cordless electronic appliances. Cordless electronic appliances means which you don't have any cell phone, sorry. A mobile, uh, we have a landline phone which we can carry away. Cordless phones, there. And also using the aircraft and also space satellite power system. So these are the, one of the greatest EA discoveries in 1990s which changed the life of uh, completely the battery system. So battery system has been completely changed by the uh, discovery of these uh, reversible batteries that is nickel cadmium battery. So now we shall see about uh, the nickel cadmium battery. What are the advantages of this? I said they are portable, rechargeable first point and high energy efficiency it has. It has very high energy efficiency and it's uh, having a longer life when compared with lead acid battery. Lead acid battery is uh, our battery which is present in your cars and inverter battery. That is lead acid battery generally. And it can be easily packed. Just like dry cell, I can take the cell and uh, keep in our pocket. You can see here, the diagram, you can see the nickel cadmium battery is just the size of our uh, finger. So we can take them easily and we can keep in our pocket. But in lead, so lead acid battery is very big and we have to take one or four to five people for help. So these are the advantages and they are so smaller and lighter. Smaller and lighter, portable, rechargeable, higher energy efficiency, longer life. So this is the thing all you should be remembering about our nickel cadmium battery. And the final question is what is the output voltage? We are going to get 1.2 volt. This you should never forget. For dry cell it is 1.1 volt. Recollect again. Dry cell, it is 1.1 volt current we have obtained. The output voltage for the nickel cadmium cell, nickel cadmium cell will be 1.2 volt. Hope you understand this important concepts of nickel cadmium cell. Right? Next one is a nickel metal hydride cell. So here what is common between that and this means nickel. So it implies that we have a metal hydride. Metal hydride means MH. Nickel means I told you already NiOOH. Nickel oxide hydroxide will be there. So instead of cadmium we have used metal hydride. Metal hydride implies if it gives a it immediately breaks down into H minus. This is called as hydride. Hydride means hydrogen is having negative charge. That is called that ion is called as hydride ion. So hydride ion means hydrogen should have a negative charge. That is called hydride. So this is our metal hydride and nickel oxide hydroxide. These two we are going to use. So you can see here clearly NiMH. NiMH means MH means metal hydride. You can simply remember MH is. So metal hydride means MH. Metal hydride. M is for metal and hydride. What metals we will be taking? That we will discuss now. So this is an example of a nickel metal hydride battery. These are also simple like uh, portable, uh, useful rechargeable very important you can see here it, uh, on this one they are written, written that they are rechargeable if once they are exhausted we need not throw them you can again recharge them and utilize so this is the uh, diagram indicating the mechanism of the flow of electrons during charging and discharging clear during charging this reaction takes place you are discharging this reaction takes place. So what are the charging and discharging points we will be seeing here clearly. So now see here very clearly. So nickel metal hydride battery is again a rechargeable battery. Correct. The same point has been for nickel cadmium battery. So now we have to 
keep something in your mind that you are going to compare nickel cadmium battery with nickel metal hydride battery. Nickel cadmium battery is also rechargeable, very good. Nickel metal hydride battery also is a rechargeable battery. So both of them are rechargeable. Second point, the chemical reaction, I told as this cathode will be nickel hydride hydroxide. Nickel oxide hydroxide. Right? So this is nickel oxide hydroxide. This will be our cathode. Our anode will be here metal hydride. Previously what was there? Cadmium was the cathode. Right? Positive electrode. Cadmium. Next. The negative electrode uses the hydrogen absorbing alloy. Generally it will be in the form of AB5. So hydrogen absorbing alloy. So if you see in this diagram you can now understand what I am saying. See very clearly I have told you that MH metal hydride always gives you H minus ions. So this negative electrode should have a capacity to absorb this H minus ions. If you see the small dots you can think them as metal ions and these large ones are so you can see metal hydride and this is hydrogen so this is small dot, round circles small circles this is hydride ions they should be trapped within the gaps of this metal hydride so generally this uh, we will be having the ab5 formula so what are the examples also i will show you slowly so see in the next slide what are the examples for this which one can be used so we have here Sometimes we also use AB2 type. Instead of AB5, we can use AB2. Example is lanthanum nucleate and titanium nucleate. So Ti2Ni means Ni2A2. And here this is 5, AB5 type. This is AB5. A is one metal, B is one metal. So A is lanthanum, B is nickel. We have written 5. And here nickel. A is nickel and titanium is twice and I take AB2 type. So nickel metal hydride also has potassium hydroxide alkaline. Generally we take it as 5M. Electrolyte is always base. This is common in both nickel cadmium battery and nickel metal hydride battery. You should remember the common point so that you can compare these two and see the differences and remember the differences then you can write both the questions simply. And uh, what is the separator? We generally use the polypropylene separator. The polypropylene separator easily separates the metal and the metal hydride and the cathode and the anode. That's all. So here it is. What are the electrode reactions taking place? So I told you right. So during the this is discharge. Remember this is discharge reaction. So electron starts moving from metal to metal hydride to nickel so mh right mh gives rise to m plus plus h minus here so at this electron is taken by this wire and it is going to the load so we get h plus here h plus and oh minus it becomes water molecule here so this is h plus so a minus will be going here M becomes M plus and M plus becomes M here. Very good. And this H plus and OH minus, both of them combined to form water molecule. Right. So slowly it comes to the electrons start moving from here to here. All the electrons have come towards the positive electrode. Right. In the positive electrode, what we have? Nickel oxide hydroxide. See here. So MH OH minus reacts to both of them to form M plus H2O plus this one electron. So this one electron has come into our current uh, plate and that current has we are sending into the nickel oxide hydroxide. So that is our positive electrode. Positive electrode, right? Cathode. So NiOOH, here we have NiOOH. 
it absorbs this electron along with this water molecules to form NiOH twice. So see here, NiOH absorbs this to form NiOH twice. And what is left here? OH minus only is left. So here we have taken the OH minus. Here you can see observe clearly. OH minus I have consumed here and we have generated H2O. And the other side is H2O is taken and OH minus is generated. So the concentration of this alkaline electrolyte that is potassium hydroxide doesn't change. Potassium hydroxide doesn't change. So I took it as 5 molar position. So, what is the reaction, entire reaction, overall reaction is this only, MH plus NiOOH gives rise to M plus NiOOH twice. What is the difference between this one and nickel cadmium batteries? Instead of MH, we have taken CD, that's all. Remaining all is the same reaction. So, if you know one battery clearly, the second battery is very easy for you to understand. This is the discharge reactions. Now, if the charging is done, I said, what happens? The reactions reverse by themselves. So, this is the discharge. So, while charging, the reverse reaction takes place. So, while charging, the reverse reactions takes place like this. This is charge. This is charging. And this will be discharging reactions. This is discharge reaction. This one is discharge. So I, I will combine both of them and show you in the next slide. Like this. Simple. If you write one, this other one is just reverse the arrow. Metal hydride OH minus by discharging it forms metal and H2O. While you are charging, means current is produced here, electron. While you are charging, means you are giving the current here, this electron. This electron is absorbed by these three, you are charging. Means you have put it in the switch board and you have put on the switch. So while charging, the reaction is completely reversed and all the reactants have been formed. Similarly, at cathode, what happens? The forward reaction takes place during discharging. While you are utilizing your phone, are you are using the camera, then the forward reaction takes place. Once the batteries are completely exhausted, you keep them for recharging. Then what happens? Nickel hydroxide and OH minus, they combine to form this electron again. And here, the overall reaction is reversed. So this is a reversible reaction. So the same thing I have shown you here, diagrammatically. So what are these big rounds I told you? So the big rounds are metal hydrides or something. So this is the hydrogen. You should be able to trap the hydrogen here. So there MH becomes M and electrons are released. OH minus becomes H2. So this is while discharging. Remember while discharging. What happens while charging? The reverse reaction takes place. That is what is here we have written. The electrode reactions of nickel metal hydride battery. So now what are the applications? Finally, we will come to the conclusion of what are the applications of nickel metal hydride battery. So it is generally finding applications in cameras. Just now I told you very clearly that cameras, cameras and next medical instruments. Medical instruments so generally we cannot use primary batteries always, right? They should be continuously running in ICU, right? Then we can use these uh, metal hydride batteries, nickel metal hydride batteries and lasers for, and mobile phones also we are using now. Previously they used these uh, nickel metal hydride batteries also in mobile phones. So these are all the important applications of our, our nickel metal hydride battery. So you should be very thorough with this battery. Why? Because this one and the nickel cadmium battery, both of them are having a very good efficiency. They can have two to three times the capacity. Metal hydride is having two to three times capacity of nickel cadmium battery. That is why metal hydride has become more popular. You cannot, you cannot stop there because the nickel cadmium is enough to know, sir. We can recharge it, we can uh, again and again we can recharge it. 
But uh, the output voltage is only 1.2 volt. Remember that. Again, I am writing dry cell. How much? 1.1 volt. Next one is nickel cadmium cell. 1.2 volt. And if you come for this nickel metal hydride battery, it is 1.4 to 1.6 volt. Clear? So nickel metal hydride battery, nickel metal M hydride means H battery, it is 1.4 to 1.6 volt. Generally we can write we write 1.4 or 1.6. Whatever is more comfortable, you can fill it with, right? So this is the reason why these are gaining the importance because the cell voltage is very high when compared with the dry cell and it is rechargeable right now we shall see the applications of this so applications already i think i told you here right these are the applications cameras medical instruments razors cell phones for applications we have that's enough so till now what we have discussed is what are what is a battery? How many types of batteries are there? That is primary battery, secondary battery. The primary battery are non-rechargeable batteries. The secondary batteries are rechargeable batteries because cell reactions are reversible. In the primary battery, as an example, we have discussed the construction, working, and the utilities under the merits or disadvantages of dry cell. In the secondary battery, till now we have discussed two important batteries that is the nickel cadmium battery and the nickel metal hydride battery. Here, the dry cell has 1.1 volt output, nickel cadmium battery has 1.2 volt output, and the nickel metal hydride battery has 1.4 to 1.6 volt output voltage. Right. So this is our final output voltage. So you should be very thorough with this nickel metal hydride battery. So once you are thorough with nickel cadmium, you can easily because if you see here the reactions are important here. The reactions if they are clear. The forward reaction is discharging, the backward reaction is charging. So charging, discharging, yes, that's all. You just by reversing this, you can reverse the reactions but charging and discharging. Therefore, the secondary batteries find their utilities in major scale. Now we shall go for the next battery. The coming class we will be discussing about the remaining three batteries.